Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's live webinar. My name is Siobhan from IIA Singapore. Today's webinar is on Singapore Budget 2020, presented by two speakers from Ntian Yang Solutions. For the first speaker, we have Mr. Strong Sim Xiu Moon, Asia Pacific Tax Policy and Controversy Leader and Partner. She has over 35 years of tax experience and works with multinationals as well as local clients on tax compliance, controversy, and advisory matters. She is also the EY Asia Pacific Tax Policy and Controversy Leader. In this role, Shumun works across all tax services, in particular with the EY Tax Policy and Controversy professionals across the Asia Pacific and globally. The second speaker is Mr. Chai Wai Fok, ASEAN Government and Public Sector Tax Leader and Partner. He has over 25 years of tax experience in serving both multinational and local clients. Apart from advising clients on corporate tax compliance, YFOC is also actively involved in negotiating with the IRAS on tax rulings and assisting clients with corporate tax planning for outbound and inbound investments, assisting clients on tax accounting and training on tax treatments of FRS. The presentation slides for this webinar would be shared after the event. Now, without further ado, we will turn the time over to Shumun and Waifok. Not one budget, but three budgets. The unity budget that is delivered on 18 February, the resilient budget delivered on 26 March, and the solidarity budget delivered on 6 April. And we know there's an add-on on 21st April. The budgets introduce a stimulus package totaling 63.7 billion Sing dollars, or about 13.8% of our GDP. It is a large sum. In February, the COVID-19 outbreak was not yet classified as a pandemic. Unity Budget 2020 introduces at that time temporary measures, including a 4 billion stabilization and support package aimed at providing support to workers and enterprises to allay their immediate concerns regarding the slowdown of the economy, as well as a 1.6 billion care package to help families and households with the cost of living. If you look back in February at that time, budget 2020, the aim was to prepare Singapore to seize new opportunity amid at that time a broader short-term uncertainty and also to prepare us for the longer-term structural changes. And you know that we want Singapore to be the global Asia node of technology, innovation and enterprise. But then we don't know how long the COVID-19 will last. Six weeks later on 26 March, we now know that COVID-19 situation has evolved and our Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Mr. Heng Sui Kit, he delivered his supplementary resilient budget with measures worth 48 billion to support Singaporeans and businesses. This is in addition to the 6.1 billion committed earlier in the unity budget. They're all big sums, huh? so they totaled uh, SING 55 billion. At that time, it was 11% of our Singapore GDP. And all this is dedicated to enable Singapore to weather this unprecedented situation. Then the resilient budget focuses on three key areas. So it's to help enterprise to overcome all the immediate challenge, cash, liquidity, keeping jobs for the people, supporting workers, also protecting all the livelihood. But at the same time, Singapore, we must not forget to strengthen our economic and social resilience so that we become stronger and we emerge intact and stronger. So less than two weeks later, on 6 April, a third round of supplementary support measures were introduced in the Solidarity Budget. Now, these measures are really aimed to further support to protect livelihoods, safe jobs, and preserve business capability and capacity. I think the situation has gotten a little worse. And at that time also, our four-week circuit breaker period starting 7 April uh, was announced, and it was originally scheduled to end on 4th May, and this we all know as a fact is extended to 1st June. So more support was added to the solidarity budget on that day. So what uh, during this hour, uh, what Waifu and I are going to do is to share with you the details of the tax measure, so the budget 2020, the highlights, and also to give a light touch on the grants and other non-tax uh, measures. So uh, let me start uh, by showing you the next slide. 
This slide shows the key tax changes. Um, there are three. One is uh, temporary measures for immediate challenges, deepening enterprise capability, and strengthening resilience and competitive tax system. We need to uh, go back to slide five, which is the temporary measures to address the immediate challenges. So if we look at the budget measures um, that are announced uh, this slide, you will see the first, uh, the yellow box, the corporate income tax rebate. This is to help company with cash flow. So a corporate income tax rebate of 25% of tax payable kept at Singapore dollar 15,000 will be granted for the year assessment 2020. So this refers to your financial year 2019. So if you look at it, you may want to consider when preparing your tax computation, whether you should defer the claim for capital allowance or plan your group loss relief system to enable uh, that you optimize your partial tax exemption and at the same time, you optimize the corporate income tax rebate of 15,000. The second measures relates to carry back of unabsorbed capital allowances and trade losses. Uh, collectively, we refer to this as qualifying deduction. So the carry back of qualifying deduction for year of assessment 2020, which is financial year ended 2019, is to be extended to three immediate preceding year of assessment. The current law is only one year of assessment. So, uh, but the qualifying deduction is kept at 100,000 for carry back. The third measure is really to help company with their cash flow. And this is at that time, it was announced that there is an automatic extension of interest-free installment of two months for payments of corporate income tax based on estimated chargeable income. We know other, under current practice, you, you can apply for installment payment, but now you get another two months. And subsequently, it was also announced that there is an automatic deferment of income tax payment for three months for companies. So income tax payment that the company is due to pay in April, May, June now has been deferred to July, August, September. Next, to encourage company, because we want to prepare right, for recovery, to encourage company to invest in um, capital investment, capital equipment, there's an option to accelerate the capital allowance claim for plant and machinery acquired in financial year 2020. So the option is to claim the capital allowance instead of over three years or more years, uh, just remember there's also a one year write-off, which is better than two years. But for this two years, you can actually claim 75% in the first year and 25% in the second year. And the other measure is really at this downtime, the intention is that if you need to do renovation and refurbishment, there's an option to accelerate the deduction of expenses incurred in financial year 2020 on renovation and refurbishment and the deduction is in one year assessment instead of the current rules on three consecutive year assessment. So let me explain a little further on page six. On the carry back relief, the benefit is that when you make a loss and you carry back to a year where you have profits, right? It means that you will get a tax refund. So the current law is you can carry back to one preceding year. Now the benefit is that you can carry back to YA 2017, which is three years behind. Current law is um, for the one year versus the three years. So what you can do now is actually for um, YA 2020, you can estimate the amount of qualifying deduction now, that the amount of qualifying loss and capital allowance, and you can amend them now to expedite the refund. You don't need to wait to file the actual YA 2020 to do the carry back. So if you do not want to carry back three years, then you can still go under current law and carry back to year assessment 2019. Okay. Um, on the accelerated uh, capital allowance claim, as I mentioned before, this is a timing issue. And once you claim the 75% in year assessment 2020, you must claim the remaining 25% in YA 2021. Okay. So the unused capital allowance, just bear in mind, if you claim accelerated and you cannot use them and you use them in the future, then you do need to meet shareholders and same trade tests. But if you claim them and you want to carry back, yes, you can carry back 
any unused capital allowance in YA 2020 back to the prior years. Um, just bear in mind when you talk about the loss carry back about the 100,000, if you carry back at 17%, then you're looking at a tax benefit of 17,000. But it, it, the calculation may not be so simple. So when you want to decide whether you want to carry back those qualifying deduction, you may need to do a calculation as to whether it's beneficial to carry back to YA 2017 or YA 2019. All right. So on the accelerated R and R deduction, the cap of three hundred thousand for three years cycle continue to apply, but you can actually um, claim your deduction fully in YA 2021. That means if you spend 300,000 or more in financial year 2020, and YA 2021 happened to be the first year of your three-year cycle, and then you will reap the most benefit. If YA 2021 is your second or third year cycle, you already claimed some amount, you have a 300,000 cap, then it may not be as beneficial. So now what I will do is I will hand over to YFOC to cover the uh, Tax, further um, tax measures and announced during the budget. Over to YFO. Thank you, Siu Moon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is YFO. So for my session, I will be taking you through to some of the key tax measures that were announced during the budget 2020, in addition to the temporary measures that Siu Moon has shared earlier on, as well as some additional COVID-19 tax measures um, they have been announced by IRAS to support businesses in this difficult period. So first and foremost on this page, you will see uh, it's a measure um, that is on an existing mergers and acquisition scheme. So in short, M&A scheme. This scheme uh, is already in existence and is meant to incentivize companies to make qualifying acquisitions of other target companies. And under this scheme, it allows a deduction of M&A allowance on 25% on the value of the qualifying transactions. There's a dollar cap on the qualifying value for each YA or year assessment, uh, which is 40 million Sing dollars. In addition, under this current scheme, there's also a stamp duty relief provided on acquiring of qualifying um, shares, ordinary shares in an M&A deal. But again, there's a dollar cap on the stamp duty relief amount of $80,000 SING dollars per financial year. In addition, another benefit of this scheme is that it also allows a double deduction claim on transaction costs incurred for the qualifying M&A deal. Again, there's a dollar cap of $100,000 $100, dollars per YA or year assessment. In this budget, the minister have actually announced a further extension of this um, M&A scheme uh, up to 31st December 2025. So it's a further extension of the period of this scheme. But however, uh, at the same time, um, the minister have actually announced that the stamp duty relief under this scheme uh, will lapse after 1st April 2020. So as of now, this stamp duty relief is no longer uh, applicable. Um, there's also a small change in this scheme, which is um, going forward, there will no longer be any waiver option for the condition where the ultimate holding company of the acquirer or acquiring company uh, must be a Singapore incorporated company and tax resident. In short, to come under this M&A scheme, the acquiring company must be held under an ultimate holding company that is both a Singapore incorporated company as well as a Singapore tax resident. Some uh, important consideration to take note um, if you do um, are looking at qualifying M&A deals uh, to come under this M&A scheme. First and foremost, this M&A tax allowance deduction, the 25%, as well as a double tax deduction on qualifying transaction costs, um, where the company acquiring company is entitled to these two benefits. Bear in mind, uh, if you cannot fully use up the deduction of this allowance and the double deductions, the company is not able to transfer the excess of these deductions to another Singapore company under a group relief transfer scheme, uh, which is separately uh, a scheme that allows transfer of uh, tax losses um, to qualifying Singapore companies. So in short, only the acquiring company can continue to benefit and claim the deduction on these two deductions. So point to note, second point to note is that um, bear in mind, um, during the five-year writing down period, because the 25%, if granted uh, based on your self-assessment, um, is to be amortized or claimed over a five-year writing down period on a straight line basis. So during that five-year writing down period, 
the company, the acquiring company, has to continue to ensure that it continues to fulfill the specified conditions as prescribed under the Income Tax Act in order to be able to continue to be entitled to claim the qualifying M&A allowance and double tax deductions. Otherwise, uh, it could lead to a forfeiture of the M&A allowance at any point in time where the company fails to meet the qualifying conditions. So very important to take note of. Another measure um, um, announced in this um, budget 2020, which is again a further extension of an existing um, benefit scheme, um, is a Section 13Z. Okay, so Section 13Z in, in a nutshell actually it provides a automatic tax exemption for companies who make a gain on sale of ordinary shares in another company. So as you may know, in Singapore, um, capital gains are not subject to tax. Having said that, sometimes it is a gray line whether the gain from sale of a shares is it capital or is it revenue in nature. Where is revenue in nature, it will be subject to tax at 17%. Now, this 13 Z um, benefit or scheme allows a full automatic exemption. So long as a company have determined that it can fulfill the conditions as provided under this 13 Z. Now, um, under this budget 2020, this section 13Z has now been further extended to 31st December 2027. So any qualifying disposal of ordinary shares from 1st June 2022 to 31st December 2020 will again be able to enjoy section 13Z. Um, do take note, uh, one of the proposed change in this budget 2020, um, there's a small change uh, which is highlighted in the underline. So um, such 13Z exemption does not apply to sale of shares in unlisted company that's either in the trading, holding, or even a developer, a developing, developing immobile properties in Singapore, as well as abroad, meaning outside Singapore. So if you fall into this category of shares and you make a disposal of such shares, you cannot come under Section 13Z as it is excluded from this 13Z benefit. Now, having heard the benefit of 13Z, do take note that, well, um, as I mentioned just now, to come under 13Z, um, it is on a self-assessment basis. So the company or the taxpayer do have to ensure that um, it can fulfill the conditions and has the documentation to support in the event that it is requested uh, or queried by IRAS to support the claim under 13Z when the company files a tax return to claim this benefit. Another point to take note is that um, when you are um, in the process of preparing your financial statements um, and if the company do have a gain from sale of such shares uh, and the gain is actually quite significant for audit purposes, there's a need to still consider whether the company is able to fulfill the conditions under 13Z. If so, um, having said that, you need to be able to have the underlying documentation to support your position. Otherwise, if the company is not able to meet uh, one of the conditions for 13Z, then there will be a need for the company to assess for the uh, audit purposes whether the gain could be considered to be an uncertain tax position, meaning that there's a possibility that it could be treated as revenue and therefore subject to 17% corporate tax rate. And as a result, there may be a need to make a tax provision or reserve in the audited financial statements on the tax exposure on such gain. Another change which is uh, on an existing uh, incentive uh, scheme available under the Income Tax Act uh, is this double tax deduction for internationalization scheme, in short DTDI. So quick overview, well this uh, double tax deduction scheme automatically grants a two times tax deduction on certain qualifying expenses incurred for market expansion or even investment development uh, trips uh, to overseas by the Singapore company. Now, this automatic two times deductions is available up to the first $150,000 of qualifying expenses. Where the company do incur in excess of the 150K, um, the company will then have to apply for approval, pre approval from either from the ESG or even STB in advance in order to be entitled to the two times deduction. But if you incur less than 150K, then it is actually an automatic deduction claim so long as the company has the documentation to prove that it has incurred the qualifying expenses um, for income tax deduction purposes. The proposed change here is that the minister have now extended this scheme up to 31st December 2025. 
Plus, it also have slightly expanded the scope of uh, qualifying expenses to include third-party consultant costs in, incurred by the company to identify suitable talent or to even build up a business network uh, overseas. Um, it also included some new categories or expenses for overseas business missions. So do find out more about the details. Uh, if you need details, please feel free to reach out so that um, if a company do have such expenses, especially after the recovery of uh, this COVID-19 and the company have such expenses, you can actually make available of this deduction scheme uh, for up to two times deduction. Now, what this means is that um, although it's automatic, as I mentioned just now, um, uh, and is um, company will make the deduction claim as and when it claims, um, prepares its tax returns, there's still a need to ensure uh, um, the company that do maintain the supporting receipts, meaning those uh, expenses that have been claimed, and you're making a two times deduction claim, you do have the documentation in place um, as and when you are asked to produce this documentation by IRAS to support your deduction claim. Some other measures announced in the budget um, to actually to partly to sharpen and improve the competitiveness of our Singapore taxation system. Um, on the left-hand side, you see um, this change is basically to simplify further the income tax rule pertaining to capital allowance claim rates under Section 19 and the sixth schedule of the Income Tax Act. Um, uh, as a background, currently, uh, where companies do not want to do not claim under the one-year or the three-year capital allowance uh, claim period, um, they do have a option to choose to claim over a longer period as prescribed under the Income Tax Act. Um, for reasons, for instance, the company could be enjoying a tax incentive with a low tax rate or even 0% tax rate. So therefore, the company wants to lengthen the uh, benefit of this capital allowance claim on qualifying plant and machinery. So they may consider to opt for this longer period of claim under the Section 19 and the 6th Schedule. At present moment, the 6th Schedule have six categories of writing down period. So this proposed change in this budget is to reduce it down to only three categories of uh, claim period, which is six year, 12 years, and 16 years. And this will apply for any new plant and machinery acquired by the company uh, in and after financial year 2022, as well as any existing plant and machinery where the company has um, previously indicated a claim under section 19, but the CA claim has not started yet in its tax return. So this category of uh, companies will still be able to come under this simplified capital allowance rate uh, measure as announced in the budget. Bear in mind, once a company in, make the election to claim over this longer period, um, six, 12 or 16 years, the election is irrevocable. So it cannot opt to change uh, to a shorter period thereafter. Now, moving on to the right-hand side, another proposed change is really um, um, to make it clear that going forward uh, from 1st Jan 2021 onwards, when the company receives any capital grants, right, in respect of a capital expenditure to buy, for example, certain assets or equipment, um, going forward, the company is no longer entitled to claim tax deduction or capital allowance on that particular capital expenditure where it is granted these capital grants. This is to avoid double incentivization um, of grant recipients who both receive a capital grant from the let's say, government and yet trying to claim uh, underlying capital allowance on that same expenditure where he has received a capital grant. So from 1st January, January 2021 onwards, this has been tightened to disallow the underlying deduction or allowance. Some other measures also announced in this uh, budget, which covers uh, incentive, uh, current tax incentive, mainly to both extend the useful life of the incentive, um, as shown in these slides, as well as to make certain uh, expansion and enhancements to the incentive. On the left hand side for marine sector, so for ship operators who are under this uh, MSI incentive scheme, um, both and enterprise approved international shipping enterprise uh, for those that are non-Singapore flagship operators, as well as for Singapore ship operators under the MSI, as, uh, under this two MSI incentive. 
However, the stamp duty remission um, on instruments executed on and after 1st June 2021, that benefit or that remission has now, um, under this budget 2020, um, will lapse after 1st June 2021. In the middle is the uh, incentive that is um, to incentivize uh, global traders um, who are set up in Singapore. So it's called the GTP in short. Um, the change announced in this budget is that um, there's this GTP, currently there's a GTP structured commodity financing scheme. So with this budget announcement, that GTP scheme will lapse and the qualifying activities uh, as currently covered under the GTP structured commodity financing scheme will now roll under this existing GTP scheme. So it will be minimized and subsumed under the existing GTP scheme. There's uh, also another change, which is for LNG. Um, currently, there's a 5% concessionary tax rate for LNG. Now, after 31st March 2021, that 5% will lapse, it no longer apply. Instead, LNG will, just like other qualifying uh, uh, commodities or products which are covered under GTP, it will be treated um, given the same concessionary tax treatments going forward. On the right-hand side, it's an incentive, uh, finance and treasury center incentive for treasury functions performed in Singapore. So there's a, now there's an enhancement to this scheme uh, whereby the qualifying source of funds um, as required under this uh, FTC incentive um, has now been exp further expanded to include sources of funds raised by the FTC company through convertible debts issued on or after 19 February 2020. Another tweak or change to this FTC incentive is that qualifying FTC activities have also further expanded to include uh, transacting or investing into private equity or VC funds that are not structured as companies, as such uh, activities previously were not covered under this FTC incentive. Common to all three incentives is that the, those, these three incentives will now be extended to 31st December 2026. So some tips or consideration uh, pertaining to the enhancement to these three incentives. Um, first and foremost, the extension to 31st December 2026, that um, provides a longer runway for companies who are eligible, either existing recipients or uh, companies who may be eligible or considering such incentive, a longer runway to, and certainty to consider um, coming under these new schemes, uh, existing schemes, sorry, but also to consider make future investments to enjoy the concessionary tax rates under these uh, three incentive schemes. Plus a point to take note is that with these tweaks or changes uh, under budget 2020, there's also a need or for companies who currently may be recipients of this incentive to do a review of their current business plans to consider um, perhaps consolidation of activities that complement each other so that they can then come under the enhancements um, as announced in the budget. Um, and enjoy a lower tax rate. Do bear in mind um, the impact of impending expiry because I mentioned just now, for example, the GTP structured commodity financing scheme that will be allowed to lapse. So if companies force into or have the incentive, um, they can continue to enjoy the incentive until the expiry of its current incentive. But post expiry, then the company have to consider whether should it therefore consider to maybe apply for a new incentive under the GTP if they meet the qualifying conditions. Moving on to uh, GST, well, some of you or probably most of you are familiar in 2018, the government has already announced a plan to up the GST rate by 2% to 9% sometime between 2021 to 2025. So it's a certainty that um, the rate will increase by 2% sometime during this period. But having said that, um, in this budget, considering the uncertainty and the economic circumstances, the minister has announced that the rate will not take effect in 2021. Plus, the minister has announced that the government will set aside a $6 billion assurance package to as and when the GST rate is raised, such assurance package will be utilized to delay or offset the impact of the GST rate for majority of households in, Sing in Singapore for a minimum of five years. And even for the lower income Singaporeans, the offset package you know, may result effectively no increase in GST burden for 10 years. Another measure um, to support businesses uh, in this 
very difficult period is property tax rebates. So we all have probably read uh, in the media, um, which is a very hot topic. Um, so under the unity budget, as you can see in the middle, uh, originally um, it was proposed that there will be a rebate uh, up to 30%. All right, so 30% for qualifying commercial properties such as hotels, um, service apartments, and shops, restaurants, plus a 10% for the integrated resorts. And, but there's no rebates for non-residential properties such as industries. So, but under resilience budget, the property tax rebate has been further enhanced. For qualifying commercial properties, the top row, it is now a 100% rebate on their property tax payable in 2020. All right, so for this year, there will be no property tax payable for the first category of qualifying commercial properties. For the IR, it has been enhanced to 60%. And for all other non-residential properties uh, which are eligible, uh, there will be a 30% rebate. Um, take note also um, to ensure that such rebates are flow through to tenants uh, of all these qualifying properties, the COVID-19 Temporary Measures Act uh, has also been enacted on 7 or April 2020 to ensure that rebates are indeed flow down to the tenants. At the bottom, uh, there are some uh, also benefits um, or rental waivers granted by the government for tenants in either government-owned or management or managed non-residential facilities, both under the resilience budgets and solidarity budgets. Separately, um, there are some support measures to assist or, or ease the burden uh, for businesses uh, in this uh, difficult period. Uh, key is this extension of tax filing dates. Mainly for businesses, there are three main filing dates that have been granted further extensions. For corporate tax, the upcoming filing uh, requirement is the estimated chargeable income for companies with financial year ending in January and February. So under these support measures, there will be extension uh, of the due date to submit and file the ECI uh, by 30th June 2020. For GST returns uh, to be for accounting period ending 31st March 2020, uh, it has also been further extended uh, from 30th April to 11th of May 2020. Some companies may also need to file their Section 45 withholding tax forms, which is withholding tax on payments, certain specified payments made to non-residents of Singapore. Uh, such returns forms were due in April 2020 from 15 April uh, original due date it has now been extended to 15 of May 2020. With that, I hand over back to Siu Moon. Thank you, Wai Fok. Uh, let me now cover with you on the grants and other non-tax highlights announced in Budget 2020. I will not do all of them, but I'll highlight some of the key ones. I think at this time, really to save jobs is uh, key and also to help enterprises with cash and liquidity financing is key, but to prepare them when this is over is also important. So the first is on the job support scheme. Um, this was announced in Budget 2020 and further enhanced in the resilient and solidarity budget. So in view of COVID-19 situation, this is something that is very important to all of us. So um, from these slides, you can see the different measures, but let me just uh, explain a bit in detail. Um, the support uh, to employers, it helps them to retain local employees, is for Singapore citizens and permanent residents, okay? And all employers who have made CPF contribution for their resident employees will qualify for the payout. But just bear in mind that there is an ex employer exclusion list like for example, if you are a representative office or foreign company, then you will be excluded. And um, under this scheme, the government will co-fund the first $4,600 of gross monthly wages paid to each local employees for nine months. So it's April to December. In the unity budget, it was $3,600. And we all know as a fact that for wage support for the month of April and May, the amount of support is at 75% for all sectors to support firms during this circuit breaker period, which is now extended to 1st June. Therefore, the maximum support at 75% of 4,600, we are talking about $3,450 per month, which is quite a large sum. So there are three levels of support for employers, given that April and May is taken care of for June to December. For the aviation and tourism sector, which is a tier one, 
they will continue to receive the 75% wage support from June to December. For food services, Tier 2, they will receive 50% and all other sectors, Tier 3, will receive 25%. Whether you belong to Tier 1 or Tier 2 and all other sectors, Tier 3, uh, the, there is a table. So what you do need to do is, if you are not clear, you think you are in aviation and tourism and there's a list of um, um, groups being listed in the table, if you feel that you, you're not sure whether you... You, you fall under those lines because you could be providing the peripheral of, of those tourism or aviation. You can appear to the IRS. There's a form for you to complete. All right. So as announced on 21st April 2020, the government also extend the job support scheme to cover wages of employees in a company who are also the shareholders and directors of the company. So wage support for shareholders, directors will only apply to company registered on or before 20th April 2020, and only for the wages of shareholders directors with accessible income of 100,000 or less for year assessment 2019. The payouts employer will receive in April, July, October, and covering wages paid in certain months. So there'll be additional payout in the month of May to provide cash flow support for firms during the circuit breaker period. So there are complex calculations, which um, is, um, samples are available uh, if you require. And um, all the calculations, um, some initial calculation will be based on like October, November wages, but then there will be adjustment later to account for the actual wages. So the first payout employers, you have already received it. So the May payout will be dispersed by end May or early June. Uh, but what is important to you is to note is that the job support scheme payout is exempt from income tax in the hands of employers. So in your financial statement, this amount must be clearly shown so that when you prepare the tax return, the amount is exempt from tax. But do you know, just for your information, that an employer can actually decline the job support scheme payment? So if you do not require which support and you wish to be excluded from all future job support scheme payout, the IRS has provided an avenue for an employer to decline the JSS payment by submitting a form by 10th of May. This is to, um, I think it's for employers who fear that the, the sum should be left to companies that need it more than them. Next is on the enhanced wage credit scheme, which was announced during the unity budget. So there's a co-funding of increases in gross monthly wage of at least $50 given to local employee in the qualifying year up to a gross monthly wage level of $5,000. The origin wage credit scheme is $4,000. So now it's $5,000. And it, the percentage is also 20% for 2019 and 15% for 2020. It's actually a 5% increase over what was originally envisaged. Uh, as a fact, you know that which credit scheme is not new. It was first introduced in budget 2013. So now, now let us move to page 19. On page 19, uh, this illustrates some of the key immediate measures to help businesses with cash flow. So you have the enterprise financing scheme. Uh, this scheme is for trade loans. So the loan quantum is now increased to 10 million and the government risk share is 90%. Uh, over the budget, the percentage has gone up and the loan quantum has gone up. For SME working capital loan, the loan quantum from 600,000 to 1 million. Before the budget, it was actually only 300,000. And also the government risk share is now increased to 90%. The temporary bridging loan program, this one is new actually. It started in March 2020. It was expanded from the tourism sector to all sectors from 1st April 2020. And the maximum loan quantum is increased from 1 million to 5 million under the solidarity budget. And the interest rate is kept at 5%. The risk share from the government is also increased from 80% to 90%. So it's valid from 8 April 2020 to 31st March 2021. For small medium enterprise, you may request for deferment of principal repayment for one year, subject to assessment by the participating financial institution. So interested enterprise, you can apply directly to the participating financial institution. For the loan insurance scheme, the support has been increased on the premium from 50% to 80%. 
and this valid from 1st April 2020 to 31st March 2021. For work, foreign worker levy, uh, there's a waiver of the monthly payment due in April and May. For the, uh, sorry, waiver of monthly uh, foreign workers levy due in April and May. And is um, also uh, there's a rebate of $750 in April and May 2020 from levies paid this year for each work permit or as pass holder. For government fee and charges, um, there's no increase for one year from 1st April 2020 to 31st March 2021. Let's move on to the next slide, which is on the longer term measures to deepen capability and transform. Uh, this includes the additional 300 million under startup SG equity. This is to catalyst investment into local based deep tech startup. So if an entrepreneur wants to start in a farm, pharma bio and med tech or advanced manufacturing and agri food tech, then the investment cap is now increased from 4 million to 8 million. And our government will partner with qualified third party investor to make direct co investment into eligible startup or invest in funds through a fund of fund approach. Then there's the enterprise transform package. This is to uplift really leadership skills of promising small medium enterprise. It includes enterprise leadership for transformation program, which is a one year program that supports leaders of promising SME to develop their business growth capability. Enterprise Singapore will also scale up their efforts to support close to 3,000, up to 3,000 enterprise in FY20 through their enterprise development grant. And on the next slide, on the further non-tax measure, there's also enhanced support for enterprise. We know about the SME Go Digital program, so this is now enhanced so that there's more digital solutions for the business community to be adopted. Um, there's enterprise development grant and also productivity solution grant. All this grant support has been increased to 90% for ESG and 80% uh, for PSG. Uh, what is new is the um, skills future um, credit, enterprise credit. We all have our skill future credit. So now we have the skill future enterprise credit. So this is a one of 10,000 credit. It will cover up to 90% of out-of-pocket expenses for supportable enterprise development and workforce transformation program. Uh, $3,000 of this program will be reserved for workforce transformation program. So this is expected to benefit more than 35,000 enterprises. And also employers have four qualifying windows under 31st, until 31st March to qualify for the credits. And for um, workers who are age 40 and above, uh, there's hiring incentive to hire new local workers age 40 and above, uh, where the employer can receive a 20% salary support for six months, kept at $6,000 in total. Um, these are the key uh, budget measures that we want to mention, but because Waifu and I are speaking to you, who are members of the Institute, we wanted to quickly share with you a program that the IRIS is piloting this year with a launch in 2021. It is the Tax Governance and Tax Risk Management and Control Framework. Adoption is on a voluntary basis. There are two parts under the framework. One is the new tax governance policy framework. It's to guide company you know, to establish good tax governance for corporate income tax and goods and services tax. And then there is a new tax risk management and control framework for corporate income tax, uh, term CTRM, to review the internal control framework of companies for managing corporate income tax risk. So this uh, slide 24 will show you um, under the program, I think all of you are familiar with the ACAP program, the Compliance Assisted Compliance Assurance Program for GST is already existing. So the existing ACAP program is brought under the framework. So under the Tax Corporate Governance Policy Framework and the Tax Risk Management and Control Framework for Corporate Income Tax, these two are new. So for the first TGP, it really elevates tax governance to the board level. And for ACAP, you, you know it is for reviewing of the company's internal control framework that impacts GST comp compliance. So for CTRM, which is new, this is a review of the company's in internal control framework for managing corporate income tax compliance issue. Uh, we, we will be happy to hold a separate session to share this with you. Uh, and with that, uh, we come to the end of our presentation. Thank you for the opportunity. 
So thank you very much. Back to you, Chevron. Uh, thank you, Shuman and uh, Waifok. So we have come to the end of the session. Thank you very much to Shuman and Waifok for the informative session. We will appreciate if you could take a few minutes to fill out the e-survey which has been sent to you in our confirmation email and provide us with your feedback for this session. On behalf of the team in IIA Singapore, I wish for you to stay safe and healthy during this period. Happy Labor Day. Thank you.